Kensworth Patrick Ellis was born in Greeley, Colorado on the 28th of September 1932 to one Burr Kensworth Ellis and Ruth Opal Emerson. They moved to California in 1938 where they finally settled in Tracy. Pat graduated from Tracy High School in 1950 and while in high school he played football, tennis, the drums, and was in the drama club. He briefly attended the College of Pacific prior to enlisting in the U.S. Air Force. Tours included Germany, Norway, and England, and he was eventually honorably discharged in 1955. As he returned, he then enrolled in college, but started working at the Yosemite National Park as a guide, and then on those ski slopes. He was married in 1959, had two children, Jackie and his late son, David Patrick Ellis. 1961, he started working at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and eventually divorced in 1969, remarrying Jane Groves Ellis in 1973, and thus began the process of helping raise her two sons, Skip and Eric. In 1975, they began the 10-year endeavor of building their eventual retirement home in Pioneer, California. Beautiful woodcrafts, as well as traveling, that included a half dozen trips to Europe, much time in Mexico, and multiple trips to Thailand to see their son, Eric. And, that, and uh, then they sent me up to uh, Rhine Main Air Force Base, where uh, I stayed up there, and I was, I was there for nine months. Uh, and it was an interesting tour. I, I, uh, I got involved, uh, I, was, I played some sports, I played on the football team for a while, and uh, but you know I got there at the end of the season, and then I got into uh, uh, going to the little theater and, do, and doing some acting, which I uh, was in some of the little plays there. And, and uh, another guy and I, and I, I for the life of me I can't remember his name, uh, short guy. He, he and I bought a jeep. It was a yellow jeep, and <laughs> it was like a chicken that <laughs> laid an egg. And uh, we did a little black marketing there. We, uh, we sold the gas, extra gas for uh, uh, coffee and stuff like that. And then we had uh, a deal with the, uh, some of the pilots that flew the coffee to England and they brought us back money. So we were doing a little bit of black marketing there. But When I think of Pat Pop, uh, I think of uh, somebody who's tough. I mean, everything about him was kind of was cool, right? He had the sideburns. Um, he had the truck with the camper. Um, he just had this uh, this exterior that was tough. You know, he told stories uh, all throughout our childhood. There was a story of Jim and Joe that was about these two kind of adventurers, right? And and he lived that life, right? He lived a life of adventure, you know, through his travels when he was in the military, living abroad, living in Europe. But he also, you know, the, you know, when he moved back and he lived the life of a cowboy, he really was a, a bona fide cowboy um, who uh, worked the trails in Yosemite. And we had one, sp only had one spare. And so we kept driving and we drove another hour and a half and then we had another flat tire. And at this point he said, I don't have any options. And so he said, I need to hitchhike to go get a new tire and fix this problem. And so we parked on the side of the highway, and it was just a two-lane highway in the middle of Utah or Colorado. And he said, okay, Skip, you're the oldest one of the family. Here's a gun. Here's how to use it. You need to protect your mom. I'm going to go get a new tire, and I'll be back in a couple hours. And so he gave me a gun. I think I was maybe nine years old or ten years old. And he said, you need to be the man of the family and protect your, your family and your mom and your brother. And then he drove off, and I sat there with my gun and tried to protect the family until he came back, which seemed to take forever. Um, so it was just an interesting period where he he put me in charge, he gave me responsibility, and then but at the end of the day, he took care of the family and he came back probably about three hours later, and I'm sure mom was mortified. First couple dates with mom. <laughs> Uh, she was in one of the uh, areas that I was responsible for the safety of, and so I visited and, uh, and I, I, I met her and, and a couple of the other ladies that were there and I thought she was rather attractive and, and uh, kind of cute and, and 
uh, I saw that she wasn't, found out that she wasn't married. Being the athletic outdoors and everything like that, I loved football, baseball, and everything like that. There was the uh, A's that were playing. And uh, I asked her if she'd like to go to a, a baseball game with me. And she hesitated for a little bit and, and uh, got back to me. I can't remember if it was right away or a little later, but she said, yes, yeah, she'd go. And uh, so I pulled up and I asked her, I says, uh, just how many of those boys are yours? How many of those kids are yours? And she said she only had two because there were about four or five of them there and babysitting and just friends and one thing and the other. And uh, so uh, uh, we did that and, and fortunately it worked out uh, good that she uh, decided to go on a second date with me. She was kind of hesitant to get married and I was, I kind of wanted, I said, hey, you know, I, I, I knew I loved her and, and I, I just wanted to spend more time with her. And, and I, and actually, um, one of the real reasons that uh, I wanted to marry her was uh, you two guys. It really was. Uh, the challenge, you wanted the challenge of, to I, 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 just, you know, <laughs> I, I wanted a family. And uh, I'd, had, uh, I'd had a family before, but, uh, it, you know, I'd been four years without a family, and, and uh, it, it meant something to me. Uh, yeah. Come home, and the kids are there, and we eat dinner, and you know, kids go to bed, and we watch TV or things like that. It was just, it was just, just, just neat to, to be back in a family. Finally, he was always there. Like even though he wasn't my biological dad, he was always there and treated me like a son, and Eric like a son. He was very, very caring and very giving, and he accepted us for who we were at the time and who we are today, and he was always there for us. For somebody to step into the role of a, of a stepfather and to you know, it's hard, you know, it's, it, it's a crazy role for anyone to, to, to have, uh, but he fit, it was seamless, right? He, he loved my mother, he cared about my mother, he openly showed that he cared about my mother and, and he taught my brother and I what it was like to care about a, your wife, you know, and that was a wonderful, wonderful teaching. I think I was pretty firm with you, but I think I was pretty fair all the time growing up. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and most but I was of the stuff, always there for you, you know, no matter what. Most of the stuff I deserved, for sure. Uh, of course, you know. <laughs> I mean, and uh, you know, it was just, it was just being a youth and growing up and, and figuring it uh, out. And, and it was, you know, I, I was, you know, I was a, I was a dad. I was a pop, and uh, just uh, a lot of good times. A lot of good times. I know one thing, when, when I married Pop, that was the smartest thing that I ever did. He talked me into it, he, he hounded me and he hounded me and he was ready and I wasn't, but then he's been such a wonderful, such a wonderful father and husband and... Um, we had an agreement, uh, she says, uh, you travel all you want to, you, but, but you'd be home on the weekends. <laughs> and, uh, and which I was, and then you know, I, I, uh, I coached a little league and, and soccer, and that with you guys, and and so I was always home for, for that. We uh, we, we were just we just were a family. They never ever, neither one of my mother or or pop, they never ever missed like a high school basketball game that I played, or or you know even like the soccer games before that, baseball games. Um, High school football. They they never they never missed anything. In uh, in soccer one time, and uh, we had this little kid that just wasn't very good. But uh, one time we we uh, uh, getting ready for the game, and and he comes up to me and he says, "Mr. Ellis, Mr. Ellis," and I says, "Yeah." He says, "Can I play?" And I was afraid of what he was going to say, and he says. Can I play substitute? I said, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> we had, a, um, we had a, a tournament, and it was out of town. I, uh, I'm not sure, I can't remember where it was, but um, it, was, it was Skip and, and I was coaching him. And uh, for some reason or another, uh, he tackled a guy and it was wrong or something like that. 
and the referee came up and grabbed him and shook him a little bit. And I went up to that referee and I told him, I said, you touch my son again and I'm going to pinch your head off. <laughs> <laughs> referee looked at me and he knew I was serious. I said, you don't touch that kid, you know. You may, rep you may give him a penalty or something, but you don't touch him. And uh, so I, uh, I, I gave him a little bit of help. I was... I was pretty rough on the referees. You were. I remember that. <laughs> I remember. I remember a couple uh, times uh, after the game was over, and you still had your conversations with the referees. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, the referees, they're never right. See, that's the thing. Referees, they're never uh, right. The uh, referees. You, you do it. You do it. You know, the right way. And, and uh, they. Uh, do you remember the time when I was playing high school basketball and I threw the ball at the referee? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you, you had a little bit of a temper. Yeah, I did. Yeah. When, he, when he was a hard worker, really hard worker, but we used to go up to that cabin and he always had, he was doing, putting this in or putting that in because he just pretty much, we had it framed, but he pretty much, with the help of you and your brother, everything else was was what he did. Just lots of wonderful memories at the cabin. We used to go there almost every weekend, take you guys and neat. We always learn very practical things, like how to how to work on the car, how to fish, how to clean the fish. We killed chickens and plucked them and cleaned them. We didn't really want to eat them. But we also learned things about working on the house. In fact, the entire cabin was framed and we built it all together. So Eric and Pat and I all worked on that together. What would be the one thing you want to tell him? Oh, he's been a wonderful husband and father. So he just, and he just adores you guys. You know, when you come here, he, he, he puts a smile on his face and puts a smile on my face. And it took a long time to get these grandkids, but they've been a lot to both of us. They're just so special, all four of them. They're just really, really special. and and give him something to look forward to because there's not, he doesn't have a lot to look forward to right now. So. Pat passed on his own terms and I can hear him singing like Sinatra. I did it my way.